Welcome back to the Cricket Blog. I am Timothy Thompson and today we'll be speaking about the West Indies versus South Africa fixture that happened last night. An all-important knockout fixture for the West Indies. But could the West Indies win this fixture to lead themselves into the semi-finals? Let's find out. The openers look different this time around with Kyle Mears coming in for Johnson Charles who many fans have been begging for him to be dropped and he hasn't been dropped but then in this ever so important game a straight swap Kyle Mears for Johnson Charles and Shea Hope was the batsman on the other end could he replicate his performance from the last game unfortunately Shea Hope fell for a golden duck from hero to zero in a matter of one game cricket is truly a life humbler but who else could score runs to the West Indies? Kyle Mears had a almost run a ball 35 and could not kick on soaking up many dot balls to the West Indies. Nicholas Puran, who is the one of the West Indies superstars that we expected to score runs in this game, scored one from three balls. The next center bat was Roston Chase, 52 from 42 balls. It was a knock that ensured West Indies a respectable total of, against South Africa. After majority of the batsmen collapsing, the captain didn't score much runs. Rutherford didn't score anything, and it looked troubling for the West Indies as not much batsmen made it into double figures and it settled on a score of 135 for 8 after their 20 overs and South Africa looking at this stage to be favourites to go into this semi-final but how did the West Indies bowl and what happened in the latter half of this game? So at the Civil Stadium in Antigua it proved to be worrying times for the West Indies as rain fell and the West Indies needing a result in this game, needing a win in this game, what happened, what transpired? Well, the rain eased. This time South Africa needed 123 for victory from 17 overs. But could the West Indies pull back this game and lead themselves into the semifinals? The answer is no. There was brilliance from Andre Russell. There was brilliance from Roston Chase with the ball, showing his all-round capabilities for the West Indies. But it was too much for the West Indies. Aki Hussein had an expensive day, so has Godekish Morty and also Obed McCoy, who struggled in the last two games for the West Indies after fans begging for his appearances. In these fixtures. Other bowler who was terrific for the West Indies was none other than the hometown hero of Alzari Joseph, who had a terrific spell for the West Indies, getting two wickets. These bowling performances weren't enough for the West Indies as they fell to South Africa by three wickets and are unfortunately out of this ICC Men's T20 World Cup. So South Africa and England are through. The West Indies are gone. It's heartbreak for us here in the region, but it was a good fight throughout this World Cup campaign, good individual performances, good team performances, and the West Indies made us pro throughout this ICC Men's T20 World Tell Cup. Tell me your thoughts on the West Indies performance throughout this ICC Men's T20 World Cup, and who were your individual favorites, and who was the star of the show for the West Indies through the entire World Cup campaign? This is Timothy Thompson signing out. Like, share, comment, subscribe, support the thing, because we want the cricket blog to win. <laughs> Goodbye.